Let us now proceed and check out one more concept in case of Kotlin such as data classes. And also in the previous video we learned that by default every class has a super class of any and this class of any provides the functions or methods such as equals method, hash code method and also to string method. So all these methods are by default present in every class that we define inside the Kotlin file. And now proceeding forward when we use the data classes the Kotlin simply provides a copy method for us that we will check out inside the demo video. And now the data classes simply provides these mentioned methods implementation. So we can make effective use of these methods inside the data classes. Now what does this data classes stands for? Let's check it out. So here inside the IntelliJ IDE I have a class of user. Now as a field variable or the property of the user I will simply define the name and ID. So here I have simply defined the property name and also ID of the student or the user right. And now inside the main function I will simply define two objects of user. So here I have user1 and user2. If you notice here I have user name as Sam and here Sam as well ID as 10 and 10 here as well. So both these user1 and user2 has the same name and same ID. Now if I compare let's say user1 equal to equal to user2 then simply print out equal else not equal. So let us now run the code. So in the output we have not equal. Now you must be wondering that these two values are same SAM10 SAM10 so why not user1 and user2 are equal. Just because here we are simply creating two objects and these are actually two references. So these are two different objects created inside the heap memory. So here we are actually comparing the object reference. So both are in this case are different right. So that is why we get not equal in case of Kotlin. Now in case of Java as well if you are from a Java background then you must be knowing what I am talking about. When we create user and user it simply creates two different objects but with the same value. And now if I change this class with the help of a keyword of data let's say data space class user and now let us run the code. And now in the output console we have equal in the output. Now this is simply because the purpose of the data class is just to deal with data not the objects. So here when we compare user1 and user2 it simply compares the values such as SAM10 SAM10. So it simply prints out equal in the output console. So this is the beauty of using data classes. When you want to only deal with the data or you want to compare the data then simply use the data keyword in case of class right. And now suppose if I print here let's say print line user1 dot to string right like this or even if you don't use to string then also let's see what happens. Now here let us first remove the data keyword. Let us now run the code. So in the output we have some address of the object of user com.mykotlin.user some address location of this user1 object right. Now if I use the data keyword here and now let us run the code. So this time this print line user1 is simply printing out the value of this user that is name equal to Sam and ID equal to 10. So here implicitly we are actually calling the to string method. Let us run the code again. So here we go the same output is actually present here. So by default this data class actually provides the default implementation of the to string method which is actually the part of the any class which is the super class of any classes in case of Kotlin right. So that is why we are getting the value. And now proceeding forward here down the side let me show you the copy method. So where let's say new user equal to user1 dot copy method. Now here I can simply use new user equal to user1 dot copy and let us print it. And let us now run the code. So in the output we have the value of the new user again name equal to Sam and ID equal to 10. So we are perfectly able to copy from the data from one user and then putting it inside the new reference of new user right. 
and now suppose I want to override such as the value of Sam let's say to Peter so I will simply use name equal to let's say Peter and now let us run the code so in the output we have the name as Peter but the ID is still remaining same that is 10 so in this way you can simply change value of the variable such as name while copying the user object to another right and now suppose if you want you can also use let's say id equal to 25 something like that right so you can simply change the values and if you want to change the sequence then you can simply change it by simply using id equal to let's say 25 let us now run the code so here this time the id will be changed but the name will remain sam like this the name is sam but the id is now changed to 25 now notice here that we are using the named parameters now the concept of named parameters we already saw in the previous module when we talked about functions in case of Kotlin. So we are simply defining the name of the parameter as id equal to the value. So no matter what is the sequence if you define the name parameter then this value will only fall here. In spite of the first parameter remains the name and here the first parameter is id. So the id will simply match with this id and this id value will now be overridden from 10 to 25 like this right and now at the end of this video let me show you something else let us now remove this var keyword so here it shows some error that in case of data classes the primary constructor should only contain the property parameters such as either var or either val it cannot contain the parameter right so always remember in case of data classes the primary constructor should only contain the property variables such as var or val. So this was all about this video of data classes. So thanks for watching and have a good day.